Okay, so let's talk about the master assistant now. Technical explanation. This is doing some pretty computationally intensive stuff as it sets up the chain. And so we figured out, I believe on Apple, how to like multi-thread the CPU. So if you like watch my CPU meter, it's gonna go to 100 for just a second because it's gonna whip through all of that work and then be ready to go. The way that Master Assistant used to work is that you had sort of like a survey at the beginning. You would choose, do I want like, how intense do I want it? Do I wanna do it for streaming or CD? You couldn't like hear those choices. It wasn't really a fun or interesting interaction with the Master Assistant. And then it just left you on the module view, like here's your chain, go ahead. Um, and so for this, we, we switched that up where now that I've hit this master assistant tab at the top here, it's waiting for audio. So no survey, it's ready to go. The first thing it's gonna do is analyze your music and then we'll look at the, the screen that it lands us on. And we're back. So in, you know, just uh, 20 seconds or so, it's it's gone ahead and analyzed the, the loudness, the tonal balance, the dynamics and the width of my song here. And it's set up actually a ton of different chains. Now we have this master assistant view where from a high level, I can interact with those chains and dial in my master and do it in a really powerful way. So the first thing I'll draw our attention to is this area that we call the target library. Um, you know, pinch this in a little bit. So the target library is a set of like genre targets, basically almost like presets that we've shipped with this. And what Master Assistant has done is analyze my track, analyze those, uh, properties or characteristics of my track that I mentioned, the tonal balance, the width, the microdynamics, and the loudness. And then it's actually targeting hip hop rap and targeting basically a preset thing where we're saying this is what the best tonal balance, dynamics, and width of hip hop rap sound like. And in order to determine that, we went out and analyzed a bunch of great hip hop rap songs actually defined by what are the chart topping hits in each genre. And then if I go ahead and change from hip hop rap to say pop, we are now aiming at a different target and all of the processing has changed under the hood to hit that target. So in one click, I've changed like 50 different parameters of ozone under the hood, which is really, really cool you can see the tonal balance target has changed between hip hop with a little bit more like sub bass down here, a little bit of a hyped like hi-hat vocal region up here. This is tonal balance control is another product we have. This visualizes the tonal balance. Um, and when I play my song, that white line is my song. And, and the idea is you kind of want to fit your white line into the tunnel. And you do that by controlling the EQ and the stabilizer in this tone match section. Let's listen to what that sounds like. Let me turn stabilizer off first. So here's the EQ, sorry, stop and start. You can pop that off and on with these power buttons if you like. And so what we're actually doing is scaling the entire EQ that we've set up. And here we can see that EQ. A little bit drastic because my song really had a lot of mud and was really lacking in high end. And this is what it's doing. We're saying, okay, we're Isotope Master Assistant is setting up this curve for you. Do you want 100% of the curve? Do you want 50%, you know, 16%? And so from here, you can kind of listen and, and dial that by, by, dial that in by ear, which is pretty neat. 
we've really improved the way, not only like improved the targets that this EQ is aiming at, we've improved the way that the EQ actually learns this. So you're gonna get almost like more bold curves, um, so, sort of detailed. You can see we're using five different nodes here to dial in a pretty specific type of EQ. So really powerful that it's able to learn that. And then on top of it, you have stabilizer, uh, which is doing its adaptive dynamic EQ kind of on top of that. And if we turned the EQ off, you'd see the stabilizer would have to work a lot harder. And so the combination of these kind of EQ preparing the tonal balance to then just be smoothed out over time by the stabilizer is a really powerful combination and probably doing most of the heavy lifting in, in Master Assistant here. So pretty, pretty neat stuff there, but, but it actually doesn't stop. We've added these new assistive capabilities for width and dynamics, where let's talk about width match. Ozone Master Assistant is gonna set up the imager for you. And so we can go take a look at what that did. Pulling down some of that wide, too wide base we were looking at earlier, boosting sort of this mid region and it thought the high, high frequencies were just about good, just needed to be a little bit wider. And the way it's doing that is looking at the ratio of the mid signal to the side signal and then using the imager to basically hit this target that we've created with pop. It's the average width of like the most popular pop songs. Um, and then with this slider, you're adjusting, again, how much do I want of it? 50% of the suggestion, 100%, 25%. Let's listen to how that sounds. Yeah, so why not? I'll go 100% on it. Let's toggle that off and on. It really benefits from that, that mid-range boost, but it's kind of neat because in one control, you're actually scaling all of these. So you're doing this low-end width reduction move, the mid-range uh, width expansion move, it's setting up recover sides, so you're actually not losing that low side base signal, which is pretty cool. And so that's the new width matching capability in the master assistant. Let's keep it going. Dynamics match. This is actually why we built the impact module. Because, you know, we're thinking, okay, we how do we help control people's dynamics with the master assistant? It, too complicated to have to set and learn, you know, threshold ratio attack and release. Instead, we just want more punchy, less punchy. Measure the microdynamics of the chart topping hits, measure your microdynamics, and then use impact to make you sound like the average of the chart topping hits. And so what it's done, let's see a little bit of a crisscross here. Less bass punch, more low mid punch, less high mid punch, more high punch. It's also set it the envelope to 100 milliseconds? That's correct. Yeah, we, we made that decision because we didn't want to bank on people having their session tempo synced. Like we could have set this to be synced to 16th notes, but just to be a little bit safer, we, we set it to 100 milliseconds instead. Because mm. it's also like, okay, do we... Do we, what if somebody, you know, I have this song in 78, but what if it's actually double that? What if it's 156? Or like, you know, if I crank this up to 156, then the eighth is the 16th note and it's like, it's too much of a variable. So that, that was why we went with a uh, non-synced envelope. But what I would do, you know, the idea is you're controlling this from a high level view here, more or less of the processing, change the target, but then I'm coming in here and maybe I want to make the decision. Yeah, I like the tempo synced. And in one button, now it's now it's tempo synced. Gotcha. Um, so that's kind of one of those extra decisions you can make as you come in here and have fun. You know, someone might look at this and be like, nah, don't boost 32 hertz and just bring that down. 
you know, easy little customi- customization choices. Maybe I want less smoothing. That's a really good point to touch on. Maybe uh, is it's it's really is kind of meant to be a starting point, right? It's not meant to be the end all be all of it. It's being like this is. De- depending on the target we have or the target that you set, this is what we think you need to do to get to that goal. And then obviously you can go in and adjust to taste. Yeah, exactly. And like the first decision I made was like, okay, we detected hip hop rap. That's not right. I want it to be pop. Someone, uh, you know. Someone's asking, um, Peter McCabe is wondering how you make your own reference targets. I see the little, it looks like an addition button there. Can you walk us through that? Do you have something queued up for that? Yeah. Can I, I'll, I'll, I was going to save that for last because it's Absolutely. a little bit of the grand finale, the coolest thing. Okay, cool. Um, so let's, there's only two more things to kind of talk about here. Uh, maximizer as, as part of this. So what this is going to do is learn remember when i showed the learn threshold it's going to learn negative 10 luffs over the 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 section that it analyzes and then from here you can basically dial in okay louder or quieter and is that too loud for folks i could because now uh, we've boosted it's sounding all right okay cool uh gonna get louder for a second and then i'll, I'll bring it down so this is just gonna make it louder quieter And so here's the here's the loudness war, right? Down here, as dynamic as it should really be. You, know, you can see from the gain reduction trace, we're just touching those transients with the limiter. So here's your dynamic crowd loudness war. Here's your super loud. Too much, right? But then you can just kind of pull it back. And, and this is just a nice way to actually set that uh, maximizer threshold while also seeing the gain reduction trace. Finally, we, someone asked this earlier, so so here we go, talking about optimizing for streaming or for DJ player. Here's here's the stance that I took as, as loudness were, that we took as, as Isotope. We're giving you two options here. Are you gonna optimize for streaming or for DJ player? Streaming is going to learn negative 10 LUFs as the maximizer threshold. And so, you know, especially because you're supposed to analyze the loudest section, we're thinking, okay, set the loudest section to negative 10 LUFs. Maybe your integrated LUFs at that point is going to be like negative 12 to negative 10, somewhere like there. Good, reasonable, dynamic level for Spotify. We're also going to set negative 1 dB true peak on for streaming, which is just what they actually request. Uh, and that prevents clipping the lossy codec that they use, um, leaving headroom for that codec. But maybe you're not as interested in that. And maybe especially you're a DJ that's going to take this, drop it on a thumb drive, plug it into your uh, deck, and then go play a festival or a club. And so for that, we're going to boost the loudness by 2 dB. Now the middle of this threshold is negative eight LUFs. We are gonna set the ceiling all the way up. So it's kind of, are you optimizing for loudness normalized and lossy playback or lossless, not loudness normalized playback? And I think that hits most of most of the spectrum of use cases for, for ozone here. And, and that's our stance is uh, so far, yeah, jack it up for the DJ player. You got to stand out on the dance floor. But for streaming, we can chill it out a little bit, um, leave some of those dynamics intact. 87% of the Plug and Boutique community agree. You know, first question that we got on the stream, what's the most compelling reason to upgrade to Ozone? And I said Master Assistant. And I said it's because it's not just good for beginners, right? This is a super powerful tool for even experts to get that objective second opinion. And part of what can make this Master Assistant so powerful is what this person just called out, being able to actually load in a reference file as a target. And so the way this works, hit this uh, hit this plus button and it's opened the finder. And, and I've got some, some tracks here. So maybe I'll look at my pop 
songs. And I am going to choose to match this song to Kiss Me More, Doja Cat. So go ahead and load that song in. We're seeing it's building another mastering chain, and now it's ready to go. And now I have just matched the tonal balance, the width, the microdynamics, and the loudness of Kiss Me More by Doja Cat. And so what you can do is build up an entire library of targets of your favorite songs. And that way it's like, you don't have to take my word for it that this is what good pop sounds like. Make your own target, right? And, and then look, all of this processing that it's gonna set up is now mapped directly to, to that. So we're seeing, okay, this song was too dynamic. It needed, impact needs to compress it. Um, imager thinks the bass is too wide, but otherwise the stereo image was pretty much on point. Uh, Maximizer is now smashing this song because <laughs> that Doja Cat song is going to be so loud. Like we talked about, you know, these mastering engineers top tier are still mastering things really loud. So maybe that's not a good choice because there is a lot of work ahead of time to prepare this to be super loud, you know, not just let's reduce the dynamics with the impact module. Um, so, you know, that might not be a good idea, but so ben, now that's really interesting. So should you run the mastering assistant first to give ozone the information about your track and then pull in the target because it pulled in that target and then adjusted everything right afterwards or or can you still just pull in a bunch of targets and then run the mastering assistant you need to run the mastering assistant first so it needs okay. to get the analysis of your song first okay. and then you can kind of have this new overview where you're setting targets, controlling high level, loading in reference files, and then it'll save this. So if you go open up Ozone in your next session, all of your targets will still be there. Super, super powerful feature there. <laughs> 